In the next two videos, we're going to look at loops and conditionals. And most importantly, we're going to look at uh, the methods most commonly used in paper vision. So for looping, we commonly use the for method. And for conditionals, we commonly use the if or the switch case method. And I love the switch case method. And you'll find out shortly why. And uh, in a previous video, we did deal with loops before. And uh, let's take another look at them. And we've already looked at loops before in an earlier simulation. Let's take a look at that real quick. And that's where we're lining up balls in a column. So let's run that simulation again and let you take a look at it. So here's the code for that. And it uses a for loop, which will be your prim primary loop in paper vision. Okay. And the way the for works, and we explained this in the previous video, we'll explain it again, is that the for has a variable i, or whatever variable you want, and you declare it, and you give it a basically a data type. And we're using integer here, but you could use uint as well to make it more efficient, but we'll stick with integer. We'll set it equal to zero, and then you have i, which you're going to iterate over. So whatever that conditional is, then it's going to occur, and in that case, it's going to be less than three in this case, and you're going to iterate at each iteration. So since it's less than three and it starts at zero, it's going to go zero, then you add one. It's going to be one, you add one, and it's two, and it's going to stop because you can't go above two because the condition is it must be less than three. Really simple. In this case, we uh, instantiated the ball, and we added the ball to the stage, and we positioned it uh, at x equals 200, and then we add it to its height uh, plus 120. So let's go ahead and run the code, and you can see it again, just to remind yourselves. And there's our three balls stacked in a column. Now let's make this a little bit more interesting, and let's create a spiral using the for loop. Now in a spiral, I'm going to use a lot more balls, and I'm going to want to basically use perspective scaling where I spiral in. Now I have some code here. I'm going to comment it out so you can see the application, and then we'll explain that to you as we move on. So first of all, we want to get rid of these two lines right here. And let's come along here and uh, uncomment this out. So you just do that by highlighting all, right-clicking, and going remove comment. And you can't quite see that. I'm going to bring this down so you can actually see that. So right click on the code and go to remove comment and when you do the comment is removed. You add comments basically the same way as well. And there's my comments. So let's run the code so you can see the spiral. And this is the spiral that you create. Now there's a problem here. There's only three, right? We need more, so we're going to add a few more. So let's get off of that. Go back to the code. Go back to my for loop because I want to iterate through a few more iterations. And let's make it 50. So I'll actually get 50 balls because I start at 0 and the last one will be 49 because it has to be 1 less than 50. Okay, let's control and run that. And there you have it. There's our nice little spiral based upon perspective scaling. There you go. And that's actually pretty cool looking. I'm pretty proud of that. And it only took about four or five lines to do that. So let's talk about how that was accomplished. Okay, we're back at the code, and I've actually cleaned it up and added a few things, so let's take a look at it. Uh, basically, once again, we're just adding our ball, instantiating it here. We have a focal length of the perspective scale, which is 300, and that's a pretty good number from experience. We now have an iteration number. We were hard-coding the uh, number in the for loop, but it's a good uh, practice pr pretty much to make that dynamic. So I have a number here I can change right here whenever I want to. And that it num, which is your iteration num, is in other places in the equation, so it's important that you have that uh, so that it can change dynamically. And right here you got the, your for loop as before, but once again that number is written in there. Now I want to point out that the for has two brackets, an opening and close, and everything inside those brackets will be iterated over. And you can see this i number actually is used in this sine and cosine, which we'll talk about in a moment. So once you do that, you, for 50 times you're going to throw a ball out on the stage and add it using add child, and you're going to scale using the perspective equation. Now in chapter one of my book, you're going to want to go there, go ahead and buy the book. It's not that expensive. Uh, professional Paper Vision. Uh, i got to spell it right. And that's chapter one. I go through all of perspective scaling and what it is and I actually derive the equation. And there's videos on it in the book's blog as well and in the book's uh, website. So pretty much what happens here in this perspective scaling equation, as you iterate an I, this number gets larger and larger. Now what I want to do is, you can see I have 100 in there and it's hard coded. I don't want that. I actually want to go ahead and since that's the same as the number of balls, 
right here. Let's go ahead and vary that. Okay, so I'm actually going to paste that uh, variable number in there. So let's copy that and then paste it in. There we go. And that's a good practice to get into is copying and pasting your variables because you're going to type them and one day you're going to make a typing error and it may be very difficult to find a variable that you've typed wrong. Just get in the practice of copying and pasting variables. And here I have my ball X and Y. This is actually going to set the positions on the screen. So if I was not in a sense scaling it, then you would expect these balls to just go in a circle. But since I am scaling them, these balls will spiral in. So as IT times I increases, then you expect our balls to spiral in, and they do indeed. And they just go into cosine and sine, which gives you basically that's the equations of a circle. So whenever you want to make a circle in paper vision or any 3D software, you're going to use sines and cosines. And if you want to scale them or spiral them in, you just need to spiral them or scale them. And we're using the perspective equation to do that. And we want the balls themselves to shrink to show that they're getting smaller and going away from you. And that's all there is really to uh, all of this 3D in Flash is this perspective scale. And so when things move away, in a sense, they shrink on the screen. And when they move closer, they get larger. And so I scale them. And course, let's run this and take a look at it. One more time. And there's our spiral. And isn't it beautiful? I am really proud of that. And boy, it didn't take many lines of codes to create that. And so that's something that's cool. And that's just one application of the for loop. We're going to use a for loop over and over and over again in our studies of paper vision and in the book. Uh, it's a very simple format. Uh, just keep this in mind. Just kind of memorize it because you'll just be typing this code out quickly and you'll need it over and over again. You'll you see the perspective scale again. And once again, refer to chapter one of the book to learn more information on that. Thanks a lot, and this was the for loop.